It's KGB. KGB live show. We're live from Straight with Praise Land. And we got your host here, brother Kabir Baja Bia Miller. Glory. Did Hallelujah. I say that, did yes. I say that right, yes, you did. did. Right? Yes, sir, brother David. Brother David. Well, that's easy. You can, okay. Anybody can do that one. Uh, we. Uh, yes, sir. But hey, guys, welcome to the KGB live show. Uh, we have a great show for you guys today. Um, we pray that you guys would be patient with us as we're trying a lot of new things, as you guys can see on your screen. We got a new system going on here, um, and so bear with us as we, uh, I guess, practice, right? So um, we'd love your guys' feedback. If you guys like what you guys are seeing, uh, put some, uh, give us a like on the video. Also, um, I guess if you don't like it, give us a thumbs down, right? Why not? Yes, guess, sir. But, um, uh, anyway, we are here, back live again for another Monday for the KGB Live Show. Um, the the title of the of the show is uh, a world without rule or law with a question mark. Yes. So I'm sure Brother Kabir will go into this a little bit more. Yes, sir. Uh, but yes. Uh, anyway, guys, we are excited to be here tonight. Um, guys, you guys already know how we usually do. We have announcements. So obviously, last week, first of all, let's I'm gonna give a quick shout out to. Brother Michael Israel. Brother Michael Israel yeah. was at Straightway, and he did a phenomenal job uh, just documenting his personal experience there. Uh, Brother Michael, uh, me and Brother Kabir watched your live stream today this morning. Man, beautiful job, brother. Beautiful job uh, explaining and, and just going into details about a lot of stuff. I told you, Brother Kabir, this morning, right? I told you it reminded me when you first started going to Straightway yes, because you had the same... Uh, intention mm -hmm. of just trying to uh, document like man people need to see this like it's not what people are saying a lot of people saying some crazy stuff I mean do you remember when we talked oh, about yeah, that most way? definitely so, I was, I, I was, it's kind of cool to be on this side watching the excitement of brother uh, Michael Israel as he is documenting his time uh, going to the uh, different uh, communities and now going to the headquarters Tennessee and seeing his excitement, him trying to document, seeing even the drone. You saw the drone where he's like, right. just talk, I mean, just talking about it. So I know exactly, I, I mean, I, I can relate to what he's feeling. I can relate to his desire to want to show people like, man, there's somebody that's doing this stuff and is inspiring him that he wants to do it. And and that's why I'm here. I, I, I wouldn't, I mean, like I said, uh, Straightway is doing it. Um, that's what we, that's what we're talking about community. I mean, I mean, Pastor Dow has been doing this for over 20 years when no one was looking. And now um, they're obviously way more advanced. They've been doing it for so long. People went from, from living in a trailer to now living in um, buildings now that they built with their own hands. So um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I appreciate um, uh, Brother um, uh, Michael for doing what he's doing. You know, he's just trying to be a, a tool for the kingdom, you know, and yes, just sir. and trying to inspire people to to do it. And, and, and I think sometimes people, unfortunately, when you see one person do it, it kind of gives people the courage and the strength to be able to go out and say, man, if he can do it, why not me? You know? Right. So. Exactly. No, exactly. I think you said something key there, brother. Um, just, it's all about people's intentions at the end of the day. If yeah. you want to find something wrong in anything, oh. you'll find it. You know what I mean? You can get, you can make, I uh, like what he says a lot is uh, you can make, uh, you can uh, major in the minor. Yes. You know what I mean? You can make something so minor just the way they sneeze. Mm -hmm. Well, he sneezed and he made a hand symbol. Mm -hmm. He's a Freemason. What the, what's, you know what the, what's the word talks about that uh, they could uh, they'll, they'll get a gnat, but they'll they'll swallow exactly. a camel or something. Exactly. It's exactly. Like, are you are you kidding me? Right. So, I mean, um, yeah. So, I mean, one of the ways Satan is going to try to take out take us out is through offense. Yeah. I mean, offense is his way of doing it. He can do it through. Yes, it can do it through where you're justified, where people are trying to. Um, 
um, literally just offend you. I mean, like just like what I went through. You know, these are wicked people that that d destroyed my family. Just using as an example, I could have been offended. I could have been mad at yeah. God. I could have been offended at everything. Like all, you sure. know. And you know something? Just like uh, Teacher Shane was saying uh, uh, the last um, two weeks, uh, Shabbat, two Shabbats ago, where he's saying that uh, you know you're gonna get attacked. You're gonna be you're gonna yeah. be offended. Offense will come. And so when your eyes is on Jesus and you keeping your eyes on the goal. It doesn't matter. Just like when yeah. I have my eyes on the quarterback. I mean, can you imagine if I worry about every time somebody blocked me, chipped me, cut mm -hmm. me? That's what your job <laughs> is. But because my eyes was on right. the target, my target was the quarterback. I, I mean, I, I could do things without looking, you know, yeah. blocking, boom, 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 you know, jump in, do what I got to do. But my eyes is on the target, you know. And so yes, um, and that's the mentality we have to have. We have to have the mentality that we're trying to get to the goal and um an offense is going to happen. We we could be offended by our own uh, our spouse. We could be offended by children. We could be I could be offended by Pastor Dow. Right. I mean, I mean, even this uh, not to get into detail, but even like you know, Pastor Dow kind of you know corrected me on something this week, right? And it was like, whoa, you know, I'm like, I don't want to disappoint Pastor and everything, but that could have been a room for offense. I'm like, hey, Pastor, you're right. What do I need to do to make the correction? I, I was I was thankful for the correction, but that was that would have been a perfect exam, a perfect a time for me to just take the what Pastor Dow was doing in love to take offense to it because I'm being corrected. You see what I'm right. saying? And I'm exactly. sharing this just to let you guys know offense will come, you know, and so it can come from anywhere. But is what you do with those offense is what's going to determine if you're going to make it to the kingdom or not. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely I think it's uh, even been said from Yeshua, and this is not to get so deep into the, the subject already, but mm -hmm. when you look at uh, and how you forgive others, right? Yes. And how, even if you are, say there is a legitimate <laughs> offense. Say there's a legitimate Legitimate, offense. legitimate, yes. Are you going to let that create bitterness in your heart? Or are you going to forgive that person and go to him and deal with it? So that way, your heavenly Father can also forgive you in the same in the same manner, mm -hmm. with the same compassion. I mean, but just I mean, but, but just like I mean, but it could be it could be legitimate offense. I, matter of fact, just the other day, me and uh, my Ishai, we went to go get some um, some chicken wings or whatever, right? And I saw the guy that literally uh, helped to put a sunder between it. me and my uh, my wife. And I didn't even matter of fact, it was so interesting. We were walking. And I didn't even, I didn't even like, like, like pick up who he is. I, I even said, "Hey, what's up?" I said, "Oh, I'm like, oh." And I, and I told, I told my, I told, I said, "Sister Bria said, you see that guy? That's the guy that, that's that, that's wickedness right there in the true color right there. But this is the guy that broke up my home. But I mean, I could have, you know, you know, knocked him out. You know, I mean, had, you know, right. thought. But I just kept on moving. You know, I'm just gonna enjoy my time with my Isaiah. <laughs> We're gonna go get our chicken wings, come back to the community, and just keep on moving. I'm not gonna let this guy right. who destroyed my family to affect me. I had to Come forgive on. him. I had to mm -hmm. and let Yah judge. You know, sit still yes, and know sir. that he's Yah. And I'm going to let Yah judge and give room for Yah to do his judgment. His his judgment is going to be way better than what I could do to that yes, guy. Sir. You know, I mean, trust me, I had thoughts. You oh, know, right. righteous, righteous indignation, you know. <laughs> but I said, you know, I'm going to let Yah deal with it. I'm going to keep yes, on sir. moving and live my life. So. Hallelujah. But that would have been a perfect offense right there, you know, yeah. and to take me out. Imagine I go there and then I go to jail or something. You know, I mean, yeah. just say he doesn't care how he gets you. Mm -hmm. I mean, he doesn't Whether care. Whether legit or not, he'll make you believe it. Exactly. Even if it wasn't, mm -hmm. right? But anyway, um, well, thanks for that, brother. Uh, guys, you guys know the drill. If you guys missed last Shabbat, whoop, oh, small interruption here, one okay. second. Uh, if you guys missed last Shabbat, uh, make sure you guys go uh, to straightway.com and watch the last live feed. Um, also, you can find it on Brother Daryl's page, and um, and then you can also find it on Straightway uh, Live on YouTube. You can find it on there. If you guys did miss it, I would believe it would bless you. Pastor Dow gave a great message uh, last Shabbat, and we were actually out of town. Myself and my family were out of yes, town. Yes, it was. Uh, it, we, we had a skeleton crew. We, yeah, and, apparently, and, you did. And actually, you know, everybody here at Straightway Praise Land, um, Sister Sister Evelyn, uh, Brother David's. Uh, Ishai, she she's actually uh, in charge of the the sisters here, and uh, she does a, a fantastic job. Very organized, very orderly, and obviously led by her husband, her master. And uh, but she she was gone, and so I thought it was a great opportunity to promote uh, my my Ishai to be yes, able sir. to just temporarily uh, lead the sister. I know she's young and everything, but give her an opportunity to lead because eventually she's going to have to do that. But hey, as a as a good coach. A good husband, a master, uh, you got to prepare them. I mean, this is something that she's going to do. So I thought it was a great time. It was going to be short, and she was able to. Uh, she was able to be able to. Um, she did a great job. I thought she did a great job, 
and uh, everything. Came, I think when you guys came back, with it, I mean, none of the sisters. No, she did. I mean, we watched the video you put on Facebook. Mm -hmm. If you guys follow Brother Kavir on Facebook mm -hmm. or Instagram, his Instagram is at, at KGB94 uh, TV. So if you guys want to go follow him, make sure you guys go follow him on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but he, he posts a lot of stuff about the Shabbat on there. And, um, and just a way to interact, a different way to interact. But uh, we did watch it, mm -hmm. and it was like, it was almost like we were there. Yes. So it was, mm -hmm. it, it, no, it's sister breathing. You, you was kind of concerned that you, maybe you, you, you guys got replaced or something. Place. You know, I, I like, mean, man. like they didn't even need me. I mean, who did the film? I said, Brother right. Freddie, Brother Freddie. He, he stepped man. up. I mean, everybody, I mean, it was just us two. So he stepped you up. Watch yeah. out because I might have him just take over and then I can just take a small break. So. Hey, one thing, one thing I remember in my playing days, the coach always says that if the starter goes down, the backup needs to be able to do as good of a job as the starter or do better. And so I felt that. At Straightway Praise Land, uh, everybody has their role. But if somebody goes down, uh, everybody is prepared to step into their into the role that they need to and to do as a, uh, do a, um, the same type of job or even better. And so I yes, thought uh, everyone who was involved from Brother Freddie, uh, uh, who's already in, in third in command, and then you got uh, my, uh, my my Ishai uh, sister Bree. She did yep. a great job, and and all the sisters helped to support her. So they did a great job. Great uh, job. Yeah. And. Uh, I must say uh, that that baklava. Mm. I know, sister. sister oh Rainer, yeah, I had. Yeah. That thing was, and I, and I appreciate because yeah. Kabir did share his last piece. With yes, me. actually, so I know you love it. Actually, I know you now, love but it. I got, but, but, but the story behind <laughs> that, that, that. So, sister Kyrisha had the last one, oh, she and had she the last knew one. I wanted it, and so she, she said, for you. she okay. said, no, 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 she, no, she, she was gonna have it, but she knew I, man, I said that's the last one. She said you can have it. She said, no, you can have it. I'm not going to eat it all. You can have it all. So I'm thinking like, whew, man. I, I get it. And then I found out Sister Evelyn came up and said, Brother David wants it. I'm like, okay. I mean, literally, we're practicing loving one another, right? <laughs> I, I lost my cake. I lost my little sweet to, help, to, know to love my brother. So. Nobody knew this, but you know what I did? I shared it with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I didn't buy it. I didn't even get to eat it. It's just getting passed down. Like, like, so I, I didn't even get to eat it. You know, I said, you know, said, I said, I said, Sister Evelyn, you tell your master that I, that, that was for me, but hey, he can have it. I love it. That was well, love right there. That. Yes. Thank you. For loving See, that's me. community right that's there. Community I mean, right only there. in community. Yeah. If, if I went to my own house, who cares? I'm, exactly. I'm by myself. So <laughs> anyway. anyway, guys, yeah. So uh, like we said, uh, go check out the last Shabbat. I believe it'll bless you. Uh, we won't get caught up too much in uh, announcements because I know we're already kind of getting into uh, a lot of time here. But um, but brother Kabir, a world. Without, Without law, rule, rule and law. law. Yes, yes. What is that? What is a when you think about rule and law? What automatically? What do you think about? What's the first? I just, now don't be biased. I know yeah. you probably say commandments, law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what would you say just to the to the average person out there who's listening? What? To them, what 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 would you think being the first thing that comes to mind? World without rule or law, or just rule of law? What I just I just think of I think of lawlessness. I think of uh, people just doing their own thing. Uh, uh, chaos. I mean, it just it's chaotic. I mean, I, you know, obviously, you guys have said I've been playing football. I played football when I was starting at 12 years old, and so. I mean, there was order. You knew what your position was. Even in football, as chaotic as it looks like, where us were all running around, we all had our specific jobs. We had our procedures within play of rule, We even how we got to play. So I was always a cousin. When I went home, I knew daddy was in charge. You know, I mean, there's always rules. And, and they always brought safety. If anything, once I knew what the rule is, I felt much safe. I felt more comfortable. But when there was no rules and you kind of left to your own, it was kind of like, whoa, what do we do here? Like, you know, and so... Um, that's what I think of when I think of uh, a, a place with no no law, no rules. Uh, wh how do you how do you function? How do you proceed? What do you do? What's right? right? What's wrong? And stuff like that. Right. And so um, that's what I think of. Right. I think and I think it, it's I guess without saying even just even the thought of rule or law automatically I think of like just the government. Mm -hmm. You know we got rules and laws in this government, right? Things that you can't I can't go out and just shoot somebody mm -hmm. just because I feel like mm -hmm. right. Without having the the, the uh, you know the, the conclusions or the consequences of that mistake, right? Mm -hmm. So, but but, but what, what do you say about that? I mean, when you think about, would you agree that you think about government, just organization, stuff like that? I mean, just I mean, just even when you think of uh, um, um, at the company. I, actually, today I actually I want to read something to you oh, guys. Okay. But one of the things that I was wondering, I said, I wonder, you know, you know how in Christianity, right? I mean, the Christianity talks about. Uh, you know, the law is done away with, right? And I was thinking to myself, I said, man, I mean, it's just so crazy. Like, 
you're literally saying that the instructions that Yah has given us is done away with, right? I said, let me just do a little survey. So I did my little survey, right? I, I, you know, I, I called a company, uh, uh, an assistant living company that my dad used to stay at. I went to Walmart. I went to another. I went to three companies, right? Just and I actually talked to another. I talked to Maisha when she worked at, and I just asked, and she didn't know where I was asking. I said, hey, did you guys have a, a um, uh, um, or what you call it, a policy manual or a handbook? She said yes, and she says so. She says she got it when she first got there, and it kind of tells you what to do and everything. I said okay. I even asked her, "Do you know what I'm where I'm going?" She said, "No, I don't know where you're going." So then I went to Walmart. I asked the same thing. The person said, "Yeah, I mean, we we have a a procedure on how we do things, and it'll be weird. I'll feel very uncomfortable if we didn't have this stuff." And so I'm going around just asking people. I said, "Man, you got the people in dark, right? Yeah. Who understands that a company needs." policy or or some type of way of uh rules of engagement so they'd be able to know how to do their job i mean they even have one for like at walmart i guess walmart has their the the company as a whole then they have their department uh rules even within the department is different rules mm -hmm. and rules of engagement you know just like our government we have federal law right then we have state law then we have local laws right i mean so i mean even within our country we live i mean it's it's just amazing. Then even within that, if you go to your household, every household have their rules and, and laws and everything like that. So let me let me read something to you here just to give you guys a definition, because this is where I want to uh, kind of go here. It. But it says, um, and I think I'm going to write it, it says, what are policy manuals? This is a secular uh, definition. I just I just pulled this up from the Internet. So there's nothing special about it. I'm just I'm going to read. It says the, a policy manual is a collection of documents that defines organization rules, policy, and procedures, and helps staffs and management to run the business. Policy manuals may be offline, paper documents, or virtual documents, which are stored electronically. These are types of policies. They are company-wide, I just said, like federal, department focus, road Pacific policies. Policy topics include human resource, finance, sales, administrations, legal, and informational technology. The elements, it says uh, a policy document elements are a policy document includes an overview of the policy, a description of the employee's impact by the policies, by the policies, the benefits or expected outcomes of the policy and the consequences of not following the policies and the creation date of the policy. I, was, I went to a company and the guy says, he, they didn't have a handbook. There was interest. It was like, why did the mm -hmm. people ask? He said, we don't, he, he wasn't given one. Sure. He wasn't given one. I said, so how do you know what to do? I mean, the place looked pretty neat and everything. He says, well, it's just common sense. I said, is it common? Like, give me an example. He says, well, I know not to come to work without no pants. That's not acceptable, okay. you know, or, or start giving people stuff. That's, you know, giving people stuff for free. That's not okay. So you just try to tell me that there is a, a general theme that when you're in that organization, what to do, right? Yes, sir. So here's the benefits of a policy. The benefits of a policy manual is this, the existence of a well-written Standardized policy will save management time, help to ensure employees across the business are treated fairly. Businesses are treated fairly, which can improve morale and reduce legal risk. In addition, business policy manual align with the support with and support corporate strategies and values. Policy communication for new employees. This is interesting. Even I mean, you'll see where I'm going with this. I, it says he says a policy manual review led by someone in the human resource department is often part of a of a new employee orientation program. Right? Many companies require that new employees sign a document confirming that they have read and will abide by the company policy. Yes, sir. And here's the last one, ongoing policy communication, ongoing policy reminders, new policy in introductions, and ongoing reinforcements of the policy are most often handled by department management. These activities may be accomplished in a one-on-one -on -one meetings, team meetings, and or by leveraging emails and other electronic communication channels. Now, do you, do you, are you guys hearing this stuff? Yes, sir. This is all the stuff that I can literally, I can put Bible, verse, chapter, I can put chapter and verse to this uh, all, day. To, all day long. <laughs> and the world, uh, we were just talking to Brother Freddy, he says, it's, it's so interesting. You have people, and, and one of the things I'm bringing this up is we're talking about community. We're talking about community here. And one of the things that when I went to that conference at the Hebrew, uh, the, uh, the Great Awakening, 
one of the things I know is that you have a lot of people who was, who, was, who was actually have come into the truth, know the truth. They've been practicing the truth for a long time. But the difference between what I saw that I can see the difference between uh, what Pastor Dow straightway was doing versus the other people is that Pastor Dow was a doer. And, and you wonder, like, how is he able to do the things? He has nine communities. There's nine communities. And then there's a lot of other different um, people who meet at house and, and still under the, uh, the leadership of uh, straightway. But one thing I noticed that even though they were in the truth, and even though they consider themselves Hebrew Israelite, they still act like Christians. Mm. They don't want to. They don't want to um, um, be able to. They don't want to submit to their own brother, but they're willing to go into the world and get jobs and be submitted to the heathens. You know, at their jobs. You know, they're willing to sign off, sign off on the policy man and say, "Yep, I've read it, I understood it, and abide by that." But when it comes to their own brothers, they don't want to submit to that. When it comes to the word, you know, they say, well, you only, I, I follow Jesus. I don't need to answer to one man. You got people even telling me, like, why you got to follow Pastor Dow? Why can't you just do your own thing? Man, I mean, it doesn't make sense. And so one of the things I want to address is what we do here at Straightway. Now, I speak on what, what I, and guys, when I speak, I'm always trying to speak from a, from a testimony perspective. I'm not necessarily trying to teach um, but I try to make sure that everything is in line with Straightway Truth Ministry, led by Pastor Dow. We got teachers and stuff like that. I am a brother, but I just want to make sure that I'm just seeing this is what I've seen. So here at Straightway uh, Praise Land, we yeah, go ahead. No, go. Here at Straightway Praise Land, one of the things that we try to do is to make sure that uh, we run this thing in line with Pastor Dow. So one of the, the our first manual comes in here. Here's here's our policy manual here at Straightway. If you want to see. This is our policy manual right here. Now I'll can say this. Can you see brother. that? This is, this is the Holy Bible. I don't know if you can see that study Bible right there. And we've talked about this, yes. and I think there's a difference between uh, teaching something that you don't live. Yes. And just speaking from your experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yes, sir. And I think that creates, that creates the, the higher authority, right? So I think you're more than adequate and more, more than... Uh, Certified to speak on things that you you are doing. Yes, sir. You know, because I mean, we learn from you, and mm. you're the head of this. Yes, this sir. Place, yes, and, sir. Yes, and, sir. And, um, and I mean, I guess whether you want to <laughs> take the I, job or and not, I, and, and, and everything I say, I, I I'm, I'm accountable to everything I say from the Most High. And if I say something wrong, I know yes, Pastor Dow will be in my ass, and I, and, and 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 that's good. That's yeah, good. And so yeah. so I'm I'm not I'm not using that as a as a disclaimer that hey you know no. Whatever I say, regardless of what my title is or whatever my role is, I still will be held accountable for the stuff I speak. So, but I just want to let you know. So, if you guys ever ever know where I'm coming from, this is where I'm coming from. Yes, this is what I'm experiencing. So, Straightway does have a policy manual. It's the Holy Bible. Now, a lot of people will be frustrated. I was talking to, uh, we believe not, Chris Steinberger, right? Chris yeah. Steinberger good said that, Chris yeah, yeah, the good old Chris Steinberger, you know, Pastor, I remember Pastor Dow said, how old are you? He says, he says, uh, 30, he says, okay, you're, the, you're about the age of my son. I'm going to call you son. Now, son, <laughs> listen up, you know, so, but anyway, so, uh, but Chris Steinberger was telling me, we, uh, we, we got into contact, I don't know mm -hmm. what we, what we was talking about, but he brought up how that um, when he studied the old church I went to, he studied uh, Living Hope Church, the church that uh, literally the, that uh, uh, my family still goes to now. But he was telling me he spent 20 minutes, 20 minutes doing research on Living Hope mm. Church. This is a church that don't even, this is a church that break up homes, like literally just break up homes. They, all they have is bad fruit. They don't have, there's nothing good about that church. Mm. But he spent 20 minutes and he said he spent months studying straightway. I'm like, wow, why did you only spend 20 minutes at, with Living Hope Church, but you spent months with straightway? He says, because, and I said, and, I, and he didn't know why. He says, well, they didn't have a statement of faith or they didn't have things that I could uh, be able to figure out what they believe, right? I said, well, they believe the Bible. He says, yeah, but usually, usually a lot of these churches have some type of statement of faith or, or things of that nature. But I said, so it's interesting. You have a church that has statement of faith, hit all of the box, check, check, check. We believe this. We believe this, that. And you just automatically assume that's what they believe. But then you have somebody who's a doer of the word. And the reason why they don't have a statement of faith, because it's the Holy Bible. Go to the word. That's what they do. And he says, what not? And so he spent all these months trying to figure out what straightway is all about. You know what his conclusion was, Brother David? What's that? His conclusion was this. He says, you guys worship the law. 
This, this is what we talk about. He says, he said, what do you mean we worship the law? I mean, first of all, we don't worship the law. We worship Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, right? And, and because of our love for him, we keep the law. He says, I know what you say. He says, I know what you say, but that's not what you're doing. You guys worship the law. I'm like, well, if, if, if you want to say, I, I say, if you want to play with that, but even though that's not what we do, but in the beginning was the word, the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah, right? So, but this is where he's going. So anyway, I just thought it was an interesting discussion how he sat here and looked at all the checkbox, and now he says, I don't know about that church anymore, Living Hope Church. I said, what do you mean you don't know? Because of how they handled this whole situation I don't know anymore. Wow. I say, you know why you don't know? Is because you're not born again. That's why you don't know. You know, yeah. if if you if you could judge, if you truly was born again, you can judge what's right and wrong. Did not Jesus says that we'll be able to know them by their fruits? Exactly. And the fact yeah. that you don't know is because you acknowledging that you are not born again. So anyway, but guys, we're talking about laws, policy. So guys, if you're gonna be a part of a community. You're going to be governed by laws, statutes, commandments. And then even within uh, uh, Straightway, depending on which community you are, they have their own policies or norms. And each community head will uh, you know, help that community to understand what those rules are. Just like what we do here may be slightly different than what they do at uh, 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 Straightway KC or Straightway Tennessee or Straightway uh, Georgia. I mean, it's going to be a little bit different because there's different needs, different situations and stuff sure. like that. And so... Um, what would you say the reason... I guess it's... We're so far removed, right? In terms yeah. of dealing with Christianity. Even though we still deal with people who are in it, we don't partake in it yes. anymore. What would you say is the number one reason or, or, or a reason why people run away from that word so quickly, like rules and laws? What, what is it about Christian mindset that will make someone say, oh, I got to get away from that just because there's the word law? rule or anything like that. What, what's your, what's your perspective on that? Well, my perspective is, is it's in the word. If you go to John 3.16, everybody loved their John 3.16, right? Especially the Christians, right? If you go to John 3.16, and, and the reason why is because they're condemned. That's mm -hmm. why it is. They're condemned. And because they're condemned, they don't want to be in, they're, they, they live in darkness. And so living, uh, the rules and the laws will expose their wickedness. And so they, they they rather not be around the law or the statutes so they can hide. That's mm -hmm. why people don't want to do community. Because when you're not in community, you can go back to you can say, hey, bless you, bless you, shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom. Mm -hmm. You can do all your shalom, but you go right back home. You can you're be lazy, filthy. you can filth, you can you have all the you can do whatever you want, but you come back, you put on your nice clothes, your garments, your head covering, and you go back and you you play the part, but you go back home. And this is why. But let me read what it says here. That's a great question. Yes, sir. It says this, he says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, right? But he that believed not is condemned already, right? And because he had not believed in the name of the uh, of the only begotten son of, uh, of Yah, and this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, right? And men love darkness rather than light. And because their deeds were evil, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wroth in Yah. Mm. And so I that's I mean, even me doing community, I don't I don't have my privacy as much as I used to, right? But I'm okay with that because I want to live this thing out. It's allowed me to be able to to walk this walk at a higher level. And so I'm, I, I welcome the law. I welcome the law. And so anyway, as I um, as I continue to uh, go over the stuff, let me let me start off here. I know a lot of people had questions about um, um, a lot of people had questions about um, the, the concerns about being in community. You know, some people says, well, who's going to take care of the money? Um, who's going to um, how about if um, the person that's ruling the, the, the head of community who determine who the leaders are? Or how about, the, you, you, you know, people are concerned about being abused or what about the elderly? What, what is it for them? You know, people have all these questions and concerns like, what am I going to eat? Or 
What are we going to wear? Who determines what? Do I have to go ask somebody for money all the time? You know, like I'm a grown person. I'm especially living in this Roman Greco uh, society. You know, you're so used to just doing what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. And now you got to get permission. I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. It's, right. You know, I mean, you get people that have all these issues. Well, well, why do I got to go? Who makes you ball? Who? It, it's, and like, so, it's like a, it's a sense of pride and well, selfishness. It's pride. Right? It's I selfish. Mean, let, let's be honest. Yes. Right? I, so let me ask you. Yes. Brother, right. And then maybe you can be uh, straightforward. Yeah. Here, right. But would you would you say that you never had any concerns? Oh, I had, concern. I had concerns. I had If you did have any concerns, what were they, and then how were they met in terms of when you started to really? Because I mean, you I mean, you did not, nothing different than what like brother what brother Michael Israel did, right? Mm -hmm. You said, well, let me go check it out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, what concerns were put to rest, and then if you had any concerns, what were those concerns? Concerns was being taken advantage of. I just came out of Christianity. That took hundreds and millions of dollars. For just I just got. No, I mean, I, and I and I did it. I did it. Well, it's not like they put a gun to me, made me do it. I gave, but I thought this was the truth. I thought they believed in the truth. And when I needed help, I try to go back to what the word says. It says, "Go to the saints. Go judge every matter." They didn't help me. I felt like, man, they just took advantage of me. And then obviously, when you start hearing all the rumors about Pastor Dow taking people's house or taking people's money and, and people giving up stuff. And, you know, I, I, just, I just didn't know, you know, until I got there myself or got to talk to Pastor Down myself to figure out what's true and what's not true. Um, so um, those the, said, that was my biggest concern, I guess, you, being taken advantage of. But I've been taking advantage of Christianity, but that didn't stop me before. So, right, like, you I know. You, you, I remember early on uh, when we first started fellowshipping with you, brother, uh, you said something that was really key. And it stuck to me in my mind is uh, you could relate with pastor and to the extent even early on because you yourself being a public figure mm -hmm. right you know how the media can be and there yep. is such a thing as the public opinion as being a source of media too yep. mm -hmm. so talk about that just slightly real quick about how you could relate where you could see something that's like well what's the truth because mm -hmm. i think people are at least for people like me right who are just the you know just the regular people right I'll, I'll Google something and then maybe take it as fact. Mm -hmm. But you, on the other hand, because you've dealt with <coughs> this form of, uh, of media, mm -hmm. you, you automatically were able to say, you know what? I know I, I've experienced people saying or slandering my name and stuff mm -hmm. like that, taking things out of context. So how, how were you able to automatically just decipher that in the beginning? Well, like, you know, obviously playing for the Green Bay Packers, um, you, you know, just playing in the NFL or just dealing with the media and you deal with the media on an everyday basis, pretty much. I mean, except the days off or whatever, but you deal with the media and the media, they make their, the way they make their money is drama. They need drama, drama sales. I mean, have everybody doing a good job, people going to schools, signing autograph for little children and stuff like that. Yeah. You need to have at least 10% of the time that, but 90% of news is just negative. It's to create fear. It's to create people to have something to talk about. I mean, it's pretty much their form of clickbait, I guess, if you want to yeah, call it. You know, true. you know, whoever whoever can tell you, yeah, it was marketing. It's just a marketing thing. And so I knew that, and that's what kind of made it hard for me to watch regular news because I recognized that the news really wasn't the news. It wasn't really just giving me information, but everybody's going to tell the story just a certain way, just to be able to get somebody to mm -hmm. click to turn to their channel. And so I, I kind of looked at it the same thing with Straightway. I said, okay. I, I hear what people are saying. I'm hearing what he's saying, but I need to go out there and see it for myself. That's it. I mean, once you go out there and see it for yourself, now I can come to my own conclusion instead of going off of what everybody else is saying. And there's a lot of people that have given their opinion about Straightway and know nothing about Straightway. Never been there, never met Pastor Dow, but they're making their opinions off of somebody else's opinion, somebody else's opinion, and some opinion, and you find that it's not even true. And so that's how I was able to see through that, just because right. I, I mean, I, I remember one year, they had two teammates. Fight. Actually, I was a part of that. They had me. I made a comment. The, the, the reporter says, how do you feel, Kabir, about somebody holding out because uh, uh, they not uh, because of their contract? I said, well, you know, they need to put the team first. I just kind of asked. They asked me a general question. A general, and no I gave names. a no names. names and I gave a general answer. I said, you know, <laughs> you should put the team first. You know, you should take care of that stuff during off season. Boom, boom, boom. Right, and boom, right. boom. Okay. So I get my general. It was a good, you know, I controlled the answer. It's not like yeah. they, it was like a, and you know, they get crafty when you become mm -hmm. a veteran. They say, okay, we can ask Kabir in a general way. We can <laughs> use him. So I just kind of, and I didn't right. know what was going on with who's what. And all of a sudden, I'm watching the news, 
And they had me. Look what Kabir had to say about. I'm just using this as an example. Kabir. But uh, Aaron Rodgers. Look what he had to say about Aaron Rodgers holding on his contract. I'm no. like, what? And so I'm running back. I'm like, I didn't say that. That they, oh, I don't know who it was. It was Charles Woodson. It was Charles mm. Woodson at the time. And so this, I'm like, I did not say that. I'll just ask a general question. So now they're trying to create drama between two people. I mean, I remember back in the days with Kobe Bryant and Sha- Shaquille O'Neal, right? Mm-hmm. And and sometimes I wonder how much is that really true? Like like a guy that's in the league that this, how much is that true? Like I mean, one minute they're all high fiving, but they hate each other. Right. Come on, I mean. It sells paper because it yeah. makes you want to read it, but how much of it is really true? And so, like I said, so it's no different with YouTube or uh, social media. You got to just be able to read, read between the lines. And if it's, if it's something that really piques your interest, go out there and see it for yourself. Yes, sir. <coughs> well, thank you for answering that, brother. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess that's at the end of the day, mm-hmm. uh, you really have an experience that probably most of us don't necessarily have mm-hmm. uh, in terms of being at that level of, of discernment, mm-hmm. right? I mean, but anyway, not to digress too much, yeah, yeah. but I just wanted to establish that real quick because I don't think necessarily people really know that. Mm-hmm. Um, that I think when you experience much, you, you, you approach things yeah. at a completely different level. And, and, I, and me personally, even though I've, I've never, I haven't experienced anything to the level that you have, mm-hmm. I've experienced life in such a way where I've been able to do a proper analysis of things. And that's, I feel like that's like the, that's the whole, uh, like spirit in a way with, with brother Israel, Michael Israel, you know, encouraging people, Hey, check, check them out, mm-hmm. ask the questions. <coughs> that's exactly what you did, right? Yes, sir. And so, and it all goes, and it really all goes back to what you're talking about, a kingdom, there's mm-hmm. a system. There's a level of order, and there's certain, and even within that order, there's certain ways to go about analyzing and having a proper judgment on anything based off of structure, based off your own structure, and and if you don't have no structure, how can you have, how can you judge something with structure? Exactly, that doesn't make sense. sense. (laughs) And so, guys, last week I talked about rulership. It was it was always meant that Israel is going to have people ruling over them, even when we make it to the kingdom. You're going to still be those who's going to rule 10 cities. And, and you're going to still have rulers of 10. You're going to have rulers over 100, 1,000. You know? and, and it's always been meant to be that way. It's never been meant that anybody can just be on their own, be on the island, and just think, just do things. It's a kingdom. And kingdoms have other people to, you know, to manage the rest of their kingdom. It's too big. That's why Pastor Dow's not doing it. Pastor Dow's not doing this by himself. He has nine other communities and a whole bunch of, and then he has uh, thousands of other people just in uh, doing home fellowship, and he can't do that by himself. And so he has to depend on the people. Like here, Pastor Dow knows what's going on through Praise Land. I'm his contact, so that's why I have his number and I give him a call if I have anything. If he calls, if he wants to know what's going on, I tell him what's going on. But he trusts me enough and all the people that's in community head to be able to run these people. I mean, even here, you came up here to get an assessment. I mean, how much room do you have? What do you? What can we take here? He's he's getting an assessment to see what Praise Land can do. Right. So that if he needs to put a saint in here, he knows he's bringing all the All you guys came here from Pastor Dallas. Even yes, the, sir. I mean, even the brother, you know, you got right. some, we got a family here. Most of the people came here because Pastor Dallas said, okay, I, I feel safe, go. And he's sending quality people. This and is not know, just anybody. And what you just said, you're the point of contact. Yes. So it would be completely wrong and kind of funny and hilarious if pastor would go to Amariah. Yeah. Hey, that's so just, how, how are things just, here? And, and then create a judgment. But in the, but, but in the world, that, that's how they work. In Christianity, they'll go oh, to your wife. The it. wife is the person that they talk go to to figure out what the guy's doing. Like, what's going on here? Like, I, I mean, first of all, if I'm in leadership as the husband, one witness shouldn't come at me. It should be two or three, right? And just, so, for, you know, just yeah. for context yeah. versus everybody, Amariah is my, my little daughter. Yeah, she's only two, two years old. Yeah. So I... <laughs> Just to create this, yeah. we know, but yeah. Not many so, know. so let, so let me, let, let me, let me get here, guys. I want to start it off right here about community, and and I know people have concerns. You know, they wonder. You know, I know some people say, "Well, I can, I can, how can you trust somebody to do this and this and that?" One of the things is if you look at Proverbs eighteen twenty four, right? And if you look at that, I'm just going to give a general term. If you are friendly, then you need to also be friendly. A lot of times people mm. don't trust people is because they're not trustworthy. The reason why you worry about if you're going to get taken advantage of not because your heart is not right. And if your heart is not right, you're assuming that everybody else is the same way too. Mm. And so 
if you have if you have a pure heart and you want to be obedient to the most high, it's not you're not gonna worry about this. So let me let me read that. Can, can you read do you have that? I'll get yes, to sir, it. I can get it. What do you need me? Where do you want I'll to I'll get go? to it in Proverbs. Let me just read Proverbs 18, 24. Because I'm not I me, mean, I, I know it's your pastor. He says, A man that a man that had friends must show himself friendly. Mm. And there is a friend that stick it closer than a brother. So, hey. If you're worried about all that stuff, you got to check your heart because yes, community sir. is going to check you and you can really grow and, 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 and you can grow in your walk with y'all when you're in community. I really believe that. I, don't, I just don't know how you can do without it, without community. Just like I was a better athlete, better. I could work. I, I'm not, you know, doing the gym work. I could do it by myself, but I, I, I can even do better if I had teammates to work out with, you know, coaches to be on my ass to get in the, in the weight room and do what I need to do. So trust me, I'm a professional athlete and I don't work out the way I used to. But if I had a coach and teammates and everything, I promise you I'll be doing way better than what I'm doing right now. Right. I know what life looks like by myself. I get it. I mean, all this whole thing where I want to do it on my own, I'm not going to do this on my own. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to walk this walk by myself. This walk is too hard. If I wouldn't do it for football or for anything in life, why would I do it for something that's harder than anything in the world? I mean, it says that the, the gate to destruction is wide and many people are going there, but the gate that leads to life is narrow and very few people find it. I need all the help that I need. I need all the help that I can get. And so I'm not going to do this on my own. You got Pastor Dow, who's been doing this stuff. He's been leading the charge. And I, I, I am more than um, I, I'm, I'm more than um, excited to be under his leadership and follow his lead as he follows uh, the Most High. So oh, yes. that, that's what I'm doing. But let me start here in Matthew 6, okay? Because it starts with your heart. But this is what Jesus says. In Matthew 6, 24, it says this, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve Yah and Mamma, right? Manna. Yes, sir. Guys, you cannot keep your life and try to follow and try to be a part of the kingdom. You're gonna have to choose. Do you want the things of this world or do you want to follow Yah? It's two different it, they have two different laws. You got the law of sin and death, and you got the law of Yah. And so you got to choose. You can't serve two laws. You got to pick. And so you guys that come into this truth, that know that this is to be truth, and you're still holding on and staying in these cities and not coming out of her, my people, and separating yourself, you, you just got to choose. And so, therefore, it says right here, so therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall you eat and what shall you drink, nor your bodies or what you shall put on? Is not life more than meat and the body than remnant? Behold the fowls of the air, for they do for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gain uh, gathered into barns, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto a stature? You got all these people worrying, right? And it says, And why take ye thought? For, for a remnant, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil and not neither, and, and, and they, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, I, that even Solomon in all his glory, guys, I'm not Solomon, but I know it's like to be wealthy. He says, not even Solomon, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Come on. And he says, wherefore, if Yah, if God, I'm going to speak, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is today is, is and, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O oh, ye of little faith, mm -hmm. you people that's not doing community or afraid of community or afraid to lose your life. It comes down because you have little faith. Faith. Come on. You don't truly, it's not about, oh, I don't trust this guy. Trust. No, it comes down to at the end of the day, it's not that I have my faith in Pastor Dow. I have faith in Yeshua's, I have faith in his word. And this is the structure and the order that he put in play. And he, he chose Pastor Dow to be in that position. So, damn it, I'm going to get in line and follow his lead. Guys, King David, look at King David. King David had a wicked. Um, end up having a wicked uh, king that he had to submit to. And even as wicked as he was, he still submitted to that. Obviously, guys, you know, he kept his life up, but he still honored that king and let Yah deal with him. Come on. I was talking to a brother today, 
and he's trying to choose between Straightway and another one in California. And we were just talking today. And I said, brother, hey, I mean, he's going through the same thing, man. Another thing, too, man, so many people, I'm going to talk about this on another show, but so many people are losing their family coming to this truth. It blows my mind away that you got men who are responsible, who wants to love their wife, who wants to feed clothes, shelter, take care of their responsibility. And because they're coming to this truth, you got these wicked ass women literally leaving these men, they're just tearing the house down. I mean, just using the children in any way to extort money from their husband to just get him to acquiesce and capitulate, it just blows my mind away. I used to think when people was divorced, the women were leaving because these men were abusive. I can't tell you how many times I'm hearing that these men truly genuinely love their wife and trying to literally take care of them and do everything that God tells them to do. But these women don't want to submit. They don't want to submit. And the same way these women are acting, this is how most of you guys are acting when it comes to Yah's order. You're the bride of Christ and you refuse to submit to the master, to the husband, Yeshua HaMashiach. And so, but let me keep reading here. It says, it says therefore, take no thought uh, uh, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Oh, um, uh, where, where at the all shall we be clothed for now? Listen to this. He says, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek mm. for your heavenly father. Know that ye need uh, all these things. Now here is the key guys. Here is the order of what we should be doing. It says, but seek first. What does first mean? First. First, first means the first thing, not second, not third, not last. This is the first thing. And this is coming before food, shelter, uh, water. I mean, right? I mean, this is coming before the, the things that you would think that this is important. This is something that a husband mm -hmm. is supposed to provide. If he's not providing those three things, a, a woman is free to leave. He's saying, don't That's worry right. about what you're going to eat, Come on, bro. what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink. First, okay, let's see what he says first to do. This is what this is where we really get into the word here. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You know, I teach a uh, uh, brother uh, uh, DeAndre, not brother DeAndre, he's a little boy. DeAndre Math. I always say when you see and, and that's a plus sign. So, 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 so here's here's this. So it's the kingdom of God plus. Righteousness. So I hope DeAndre, you hear that. See, I, see, it even works when you read it. And means plus. So you will use it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, right? so look it. So, but seek first the kingdom of God and plus what? His righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So he knows you need all that stuff. I even had to use the same saying with my new wife now. I had to tell her, I said, don't worry about all that stuff. Just follow me. I know just first seek my kingdom. What do you know what I tell her? I said, seek my house. Seek my rules. All those other stuff that you're worrying about will be taken care of. Trust me. I, I have a, a big house. I have dogs, cars. I, I have the community that I'm running, okay? If I'm willing, if, they, if they're taken care of, if I'm willing to take care of my dog. Now, people say, well, why do you got to compare me to a dog? I'm, guys, please, don't be offended, okay? Woe to those who are not offended by me, right? But, but I say, if I'm willing to take care of you, how much more do you think I'm going to take care of you? How much? Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing. Guys, we can use the same playbook that Yeshua did as husband. So I know I digress a little bit, but that's right, what he said. That's what he's saying. He says, how much? And he, I, I think that um, um, when Bree came, she says, man, it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, you come to a house where somebody owns dog. The house usually smells like a dog or somebody. He said, you can't really tell that you have, you, you own a dog. You know, some people can't even tell because we keep a clean house. We make sure we take care of our dogs and everything like that. So I said, but think if I'm willing, if, if a dog living is good, how much more do you think you're going to live? You know what I'm saying? And then she says, of course. I'm, so that, that just cleared everything. So guys, but that's what Yah's telling us. To, he says, seek first his house, meaning his kingdom, and seek first his righteousness, his instructions. And I'm going to show you what righteousness means. I'm going to show you what the kingdom is. I'm going to show you today in scripture. And there's a lot more what I'm going to show you. And if you haven't gotten a chance to listen to Teacher Shane, and it's crazy. I didn't even listen to Teacher Shane until this recently. And a lot of my scriptures, he was saying the same thing too, because we had Pastor Dow that week. And so I'll just catch him like, wow. I said, now does Teacher Shane have a bug in my house? Like, how do I I didn't even talk to anybody about this, but it's just the Holy Spirit. I get it. But anyway, it says, it says, so take therefore no thought of 
to the, the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient is the, uh, is uh, unto the day is the evil thereof. So, so let's 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 go to Matthew thirteen. Yes, sir. Go to Matt. Can you go to? I want you to go to Matthew thirteen. Matthew you read that for me. Yes. yes. Sir. And then, um, because I want to stop when you're saying certain things here. What verse? Verse forty-four. Okay. Now, guys, before be, be, while he's looking that up, guys, I want to show you, guys, man, when I when I came into this truth two years ago, guys, I can relate to to like, man, I found the mother load, especially when I went to Straightway, Tennessee. I'm looking at my brother Mike, how he's excited, like it's kind of cool that because when I was in it, I was desperate, so I couldn't see myself. But now I'm looking at brother brother Mike. I'm like. <laughs> And that's how I must have looked at it. I mean, I sat in that same seat. I'm like, I'm here. I, I'm in the kingdom. And you know what it is? The kingdom was the people. It's all within us. The kingdom is within us. But the people that's living this thing, I said, man, I'm literally in the Bible. These people are literally living out the Bible. Not just talking about it. Not just listening to it. But they're doers of the word. I mean, I literally, when when Jesus says, He said they will know. They said they'll know that you're my disciples the way you love Yah and the way you love one another. I believe. Is, am I? Am I? Am I uh, it says you know. And I'm telling you, man, I've never in my life, in all my Christian life, ever saw and says these people love God and they love their name. I never until I went to I went to the Feast of Trumpet, 2017. <laughs> I literally said this to myself. Yep. These people freaking really love God. It was clear. Like, no one had to preach to me. I mean, you're outside. You're, you're waiting for the sun and you're blowing a horn because the word says so. And then the hugs and the kiss. I, I was like, man, this, this, this gets me tear. I mean, guys, I'm telling you, I literally can say these people follow Jesus. I can see it. On, no one man. had to preach to me. Yes, and then after they did that for 30 minutes or whatever, then they go in to the tabernacle and worship, and worship for another 30 to an hour. So, I mean, I'm like, are you, I've never seen this before. That was the first time in my whole biblical, the first time from 2000 to 2017, the first time I ever could see, had a, had a, 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 what do you call it? A, in my spirit. Right. That these people literally are disciples of Jesus Christ. Didn't you say once that you used to stand out? You used to, you used to raise your hand. Oh my, I stood out. In the Christian church. And, I got engulfed. And didn't someone say they rebuked? Didn't someone rebuke say, hey, please don't do yeah, that? Yeah, don't do that. You, it's, making you, it's making people look bad. You know, so you had to put your hands in your pocket. Well, You're you showing off. You so, yeah, you I, had, I had to go in the back of the room and just kind of just <laughs> worship. But then when I get to straightway, I, I think uh, Brother Michael said it. Brother Michael said it today. He says, when you go to a place like this, Come on. it's gonna it's gonna show you how far you are from the truth. Mm. It is going you are you can't mm. help if you're a woman you're gonna see how wicked you are. If you're a man you're gonna see how 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 incompetent you have been and how you've just lost and you are going to time, I man. mean from from worship from commitment to family. You see, I'm seeing young people with their own family controlling ruling their own house well just from what I can see. I'm like man, I'm so behind. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I mean sir. so. When you're around the people of Yah, it exposes. It's like it's like turning on the flashlight. You turn that flashlight on, and they explode. Like, whoa, okay, we now now we can see clear. You can see what you need to work on when you're in this environment. Yes, sir. And so, man, I'm telling you, let, let me calm down because I tell you guys, <laughs> the straight way is the straight way. I mean, it's it's the straight way, man. Anyway, so but uh, read yes, sir, because uh, because I want to I want to show you guys something well, here. Read. You want me to stop? We're going, to, we're going to go to 46 totally. Okay, yes, sir. This is Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure. Guys, listen. This is Jesus talking. The kingdom of heaven. So let's hear what it's like. He's describing the kingdom of heaven, and I can testify I know what he's talking about. Go. Like unto treasure hid in a field. Mm, hid in a, it's something hidden. It's hidden in the field. D Straightway has been around for 20 years. This word has been around for thousands of years. Yes, sir. And you think that you're just going to see it. No, you no. You have to seek this. Do you understand to get to Straightway? I mean, literally to get to Straightway, uh, Tennessee, where it's located in Lafayette, Tennessee, I had to literally lose my wife. 
my children. I mean, all of this stuff was being used, threatened of being of losing half of everything I have, lose my reputation. I lost every, I lost everything that I've ever worked for. I lost a lot. I lost all my children. And I, I, I mean, literally the day I went there, my, my, my wife said, do not go up there because she didn't know I went there for a feast. She didn't know about the Feast of Trump. And I went up there on a Wednesday. Then I went back. She says, don't come to this other stuff. I, I, she was there. I said, well, I just paid 3000 for a conference here. She said, I will pay you back. I think she threw, she knew I was going to take half my money. Right. <laughs> Look, at, I won't take your money. If you if you do it, she I won't take it. She never, yeah. But no, she, she wouldn't have paid me back. She would just say, I won't she take it. Right. They said, hey, you know that money that I told you I was going to get you? I didn't take your money. I didn't take your ass to court. Exactly. But anyway, but guys. I'm telling you, man, I literally had that mentality. I, I mean, I needed to get to this truth because I'm saying, why is everybody so against? I had people, uh, this guy, uh, Vapor Sports Ministry, who was telling me, he says, he says, hey, man, focus on your wife. Forget the Sabbath. I said, no, man, I got to I gotta focus on the greatest commandment, to love mm -hmm. God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. And my wife can wait because she, she represents the second greatest commandment, to love your neighbor as yourself. Keep reading. Yes, sir. Hidden a field, that which, when a man hath found, he hideth, hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Okay, listen, I, I, I'm gonna tell you right now. When I got a sense, when I talked to Pastor Dow, when I got a sense that this is like legit, and I said, okay, I'm gonna come. In, I mean, guys, I'm gonna be honest. The first time, guys, I. I I didn't know, you know, but at the same time, I, there was something inside of me. I had a witness. Something inside me says, this is the truth. I literally snuck my first time at Straightway. I, I mean, <laughs> I mean and, and, and Pastor Dow and all the people can remember that because, you know, they have a wall. I was hiding because I didn't want anybody to see me at Straightway because, I, you know, I didn't know, like, oh, there he you is. Watching, He's there. No, I didn't, I didn't know who's watching, who's spying, or who's spying on the Liberty and everything. But the first time I went down there, I, I went in with a different name. I went with my Muhammad name. So no one knows. When I called there, I said, my name is Brother Muhammad. Okay. You know, because I'm like, okay. I'm like literally hiding. I said, I think I found something here. And people are trying to keep me from this stuff. And I, when I get there, I feel like this guy who says, man, I found something. Hide it. Let me go back and sell everything. And literally, that's what it felt. I, I didn't do like what they said, but I understand that whole you mentality that when yeah. you find that, you hide everything, you sell everything. And I didn't go sell it, but mine's got sold through divorce court. That's right. kind of how it happened. Right. I, I gave up my children. I gave up the lifestyle. I gave up my reputation. I gave up everything. I mean, just so that I can get this mm. truth. Can you? Did you read the whole thing already? Not, not yet. Not okay, keep this. reading. Again, the again, kingdom. Look what he says. Again. He's about to describe again the kingdom. Read. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it guys it's the same thing again he when he found this he saw the great value in these pearls and he sold everything he had it's the same thing about this community guys i'm telling you as i'm a part of community now that i i, I, I can tell you brothers I'm not the only one. They sold everything they had so they could be a part of community yes, because they want to be around the children of God. When you truly love, when you truly are a child of the king, and look, 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 I'm going to go here. Go to, I'm, I'm just going to go here. John, 1 John chapter 5, right? Verse, um, 1 John chapter 5, okay. verse 3, and it says this. It says this, by this we know, we know. No. What do we know? That we love the children of God. What does that mean? When we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Mm -hmm. So guys, this is how you know. I mean, so when you got guys selling stuff, it's not like we're crazy. We're, I'm a professional. You got other people who are professionals coming from all over the world, all over the United States, coming into all these different communities because they have found the treasure. They have found something of great value. They have found peace. And I'm not making this thing up. Go to Romans chapter 14. Romans. We're going to find out Romans chapter 14, verse 17. <coughs> yes, sir. Right there. And look what it says here. And I'm going to read this one because I got I to I read this one. Hold on. Tell me if you guys are following this stuff. Give me a seven. I can't see the chat, but you can probably see it. 
Give me a seven if you guys are enjoying what you, if you guys are with me here. Can you show me the chair? No, you, you see it. Okay, okay. okay. All right. Let me keep reading. It says this, for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of God is not meat or and drink, but righteousness. Guys, look at righteousness, right? Let me let me stop here. When when I go to righteousness, let me let me show you guys something here, because a lot of people don't know what righteousness is. But I want to I want to go here. Where is where is this here? Romans, Romans chapter fourteen. I'm going on here because I want to use my strong. I want to show you guys something here. When you guys look at righteousness, righteousness has to do with equity or not iniquity, but the opposite is equity, justification, righteousness. Right, doing what's right. It says. It says a broad sense state of him who is at, who is as he ought to be righteousness the condition acceptable to God right yes, sir. the doctrine concerning the way in which um, which man may attain a state of approved of God Th guys this is about righteousness is about doing what's right not in my eyes but what's right in his eyes. Christianity teach you how to do what's right in your own eyes. They said they did what was right in their own eyes. When, they, when Israel always continued to rebel, they did what was right in their own eyes. That's unrighteousness. That's workers of iniquity. And when you're in this truth, what they're doing that straight away, they're teaching us how to do what's right in his eyes, not our own eyes. That's what righteousness is. How do you, how do you know what to do? How can you do what's right in Yah's eyes? Well, damn it. He gives us instructions. Let me keep reading. Integrity, virtue, purify of life, righteousness, correctness of thinking, feeling, even the way you feel. How many people have an issue with polygyny? How many people have issues with a, a woman submitting to a man or a man being provided for his wife? They have all these are being submitted under rule. They, they, they're, they're, they're led by their feelings and emotions. When you come into this truth, when you're truly born again, your feelings doesn't matter anymore. You make sure your feelings are in line with the word of God. Did not Yeshua when he was on the tree? What he says, may this cup pass. What did he do? He says, not my will. But his will be done. He took yeah. his feelings and submitted it and made it subject unto his father. What did, what, did, what did John the Baptist do? He says, I must decrease so that he may increase. This man was a prophet. He was the greatest of them all who's ever been born of a woman. That's what Jesus said. And what did he say to his disciples? He had followers. How many people says, Kabir, man, you KGB. You play for the Packers. Man, do your own thing, man. You, you, go, you run your own lane. Don't follow Pastor Dow. And what did John the Baptist do? He decreased so that he may increase. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? Come on now, Does that man. make sense? Yes, sir. You're right. So, on guys, board. I mean, this is this what righteousness is. Let's understand what righteousness means. Yes, sir. He says thinking, feeling. Says, and it was this. He says, um. And there's more definition, but guys, I want to just clarify, righteousness means doing what's right in Yah's eyes, not your own eyes. So that's what righteous living looks like. So let's go back and read uh, Romans chapter uh, 14, verse uh, 17. It says this, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Isn't that interesting? Don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. The, 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 the kingdom of God is not about meat on, and, and, and drink. Sure. What is it about then? If it's not about meat and drink, I thought, man, we're gonna be we're gonna be living like kings. Isn't it about the food, the drinks? What is it about? Right, no, he right. says, but this is what the kingdom of God is about. But righteousness, Woo. doing what's right in Yah's eye, mm. and peace. Mm. Tell me, you don't experience peace when you come? Did you not? I mean, I, I'm, I'm gonna let you tell your story, but let me tell my story. When I went to Straightway, Tennessee, man, I tell you, it's like you're driving into a Force field. I wonder, uh, uh, brother. I want to ask brother Mike if he experienced that. It's like I didn't know at the time that that was part of straight. I mean, I was kind of passing straight, yeah. but it was. You got to a point and you just felt like you was going into a whole new world. It felt like, guys, I know I'm. Don't don't Stop. judge me on my sin, but it felt like I was going to Nardi or something. Like a Nardi. whole new. It was like it was like a whole new world. It was like whoa. I mean, everything just started. Like I felt like I went to the wardrobe and all of a sudden, like whoa. What is this? What did I just step into? Hey. It just was a peace. Yes, sir. Like literally no one has to tell you this stuff. You just feel like there's a peace that passes all understanding. Whatever feelings I was having when I drove up to that point literally just went away. The, whatever the stroke, it went away. 
And when you in that kingdom, when you enter that kingdom at Straightway Truth in Tennessee, you don't want to leave. You really don't want to leave. Like, so people is wondering, do they, do they hold people against their will? You don't have to do that straight way. If somebody don't want to be there, they are free to leave. Pastor Dow let you come in if, you, if you've been welcome, and he let you go. He doesn't hold you. Matter of fact, they, they want you to go now. It's time to go now. The feast is over. But you don't want to go because it's such a peaceful place. You have to understand, when you go to straight way Tennessee, you're going into somebody's home. Mm. There's other people that that's their home. To us, it's a place of Wow, serenity and, and peace. And this, the, there. Yeah, there's people that live there. That's right. their life. Exactly. And now it's kind of cool now with Straightway Praise Land. People describe the same thing like, man, when you come in here, it's like a force field. I was like, wow, wow. They're yeah. describing Straightway Praise Land the same way that oh, I yeah. describe Straightway Tennessee. And you know, Pastor, they said that's the spirit of peace. Boy. You got the Terminex guy. He doesn't even know. He says, man, it just feels like. Another world. You got people describing this place like that. Tell us your story. When you left, you came back home. Yeah, so obviously you guys, like we mentioned you, in the you beginning. You went to two places. You went to Chicago. You oh, went man. to Minnesota. I'm you tell us. Chicago. I'm still trying, <laughs> I'm still trying to, you know, detox my mind from that city. But, uh, but yeah, so I, uh, myself and my family, uh, we went to, uh, so we, uh, we grew up in Minnesota, right? Um, both myself and my wife. And we went to uh, Minnesota this past, uh, this past uh, weekend. And we have a we have a family out there. Uh, my brother, who's part of the faith, he follows the ministry. Um, but we went out there. Uh, I went out there to see Natural Family, and we hadn't been there since uh, it, a little over two years ago. And and the reason why because our true family is here where we are right now. Mm. But um, I I just sat back and analyzed that whole situation, and I went there for reasons personal reasons like we've talked mm -hmm. about it, and I can mention a little bit of a, mm -hmm. about it but just really just to show my my father honor and uh, and, and, and uh, reconnect with uh, individuals who I haven't talked to in a while to share the gospel to really just share the truth and encourage uh, them to uh, um, uh, basically encourage them to get delivered mm -hmm. for deliverance right mm -hmm. uh, but anyway so um, that whole situation being there as much as I thought for myself it was for me, I felt like I was really there for other people, mm. and but it really just pushed me. It, it put me in a situation where I was able to analyze, and I explained it like this to you, uh, brother Kabir. I know it's going to be a really weird analogy, mm. but it felt like if I was in heaven. Mm. I'm, I'm a visual person, so mm. uh, I, I think about these things, right? Uh, but if I was in heaven, mm -hmm. and then I had a mission, like like an angel came <laughs> and said, "Hey, we need you to go to planet Earth, mm -hmm. and we need you to go visit these people, and they need to." So I was, and, and, and so that's what it felt like. I'm like. I get there and it's it's just a whole different world. Mm -hmm. And this has nothing to do with the individuals that I talk with. Just the fact that I'm going from one established environment, a stable environment, to a former area where I used to be, where I really could say that in that in that state I was Since, dead. Mm -hmm. And 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 now I'm in. in but that life. was normal to you back then. Oh, that was normal. And, and even even even, even, even though it was exactly. unstable, driving through the, the city. I mean, old neighborhoods, all old. old I mean, things were coming up as soon as I stepped into that state or drove into that state. Just nostalgic uh, uh, spirits, right? Uh, familiar spirits, mm -hmm. um, just reminding me of uh, of past si situations. But I just remember, like I told you, it just literally felt like it was a whole different planet. Mm -hmm. And I remember even looking at my daughter, like, so. Do you want to go? Do you want to stay here? Do you want to go back to uh, Uncle Kabir? Because mm -hmm. she calls you Uncle Kabir. She's like, no, let's. Let's go back to Uncle Kabir. Two, two years old. Two. Two years and old. Like, and let me just reemphasize because yeah. I know yeah. we were there to visit people. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with the person, the mm -hmm. person in the village that we went to visit. Mm -hmm. It just has more to do with what we're experiencing here mm -hmm. and this level of peace. And like what you just read, the kingdom of heaven is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so I can definitely, even, even a person who's in community. Now, I know you said that people who come and visit us, right? They, they can say that there's a peace. <coughs> here, but... I guess we we could take it for granted, and I was in this environment where I was able to analyze and, and see the contrast and the difference. Where I came back, I was like, "Wow, I felt like I just came back to heaven. Mm -hmm. Like I just came back to the kingdom. Like I just I had a mission. I went mm -hmm. out there. It's like, man." And I'm looking back, and we once we got back, we're like, "Ah, oh, man, this is home. Mm -hmm. This is there's peace. There's love. There's unity. Mm -hmm. We're all under the same mindset." So um, that's my <laughs> small uh, analogy. You know, it's so it's so interesting too. Like when you um, when I think about <clears throat> when I think about this 
just because of the laws that we live under, the rules, you know, Pastor Dow doesn't have to micromanage it, right? Because we already have our laws, our commandments, our statute, right? With, with this, this book, this book is how we run Praise Land. This is the, this is how all of Straightway, Straightway follows this book called the Holy Bible. From Genesis to Revelations, this is, this is what governs us. Now, within the community, because different things, even within the tribe of Israel, they had different things. Even I remember one time they were saying the way somebody says an art is, you know, just different culture, you know, maybe from somebody from the East Coast versus the West Coast, you know, just the culture is different, but we still live in America, right? And but we still governed by the federal laws. There's things you just can't do, you know, that you get, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to, um, but, but in certain states, there's certain rules. But anyway, but... Here's the interesting thing. This is the same house that I built for my natural family, meaning a wife and seven children. Never met my eighth child. But I want to give you context here. I built this house. And I got to tell you, when I think about the life that I had with one woman, seven children, and my father at one time, and then my father not here when he left, I thought it was more peaceful because now... I don't have to worry about my wife in my ear, complain about my dad and this. And, and it, it was stressful. It was stressful because I was doing everything by myself and everything. Yeah. But then finally I got a little bit of peace, just a little bit, because now I had help with my dad. But I had to go, I had to outsource it because I couldn't find help within the church. I couldn't find help with my own help meet at the time. Who uh, I, 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 And I don't even know if she was really a help meet, but, you know, she's supposed to be. But I'm just trying to tell you, it was so. And I'm in the same house. Which when I used to come here, it was like, whew, okay, I'm coming, I'm going back to work. I mean, I would go to work, and when I came back, that little drive was my little, like my little time of peace. You know, or when I played football, my little time of peace was taking a shower. I was staying in the shower. I had some of my great time of peace that passes all understanding. Ideas, right? <laughs> That's some of my great ideas. And then I'll go home and I'm back into chaos again. And it wasn't that my children was running around and all that stuff. But when you deal with a contentious woman, mm. you don't realize. But that was normal. It was normal. Wow. And the only reason why I can now tell the difference how I was so oppressed, mm. didn't even know I was oppressed, is because now I've experienced what it's like to be in the kingdom. I'm in the same house that I built. For my natural family. Now I have you guys in here. The kingdom is within all of you. Come on. The kingdom is within me. Right? What's the kingdom is? The kingdom is what? It says it's righteousness. Yes, sir. Peace. Come on. Joy in the Holy Spirit. And now I can be in the same house. And I don't want to leave. You know? And when I go, I go. And I can't wait to get back home now. Like, real, <laughs> like genuinely come back home. It's so peaceful. It's so different. Even my dad, who's not even a believer, right. can honestly say there's a difference now than it was the first time he was even here. People were like you, you mentioned it earlier, but we have a our, our good friend, right? We, we'll call him our friend from, from, uh, from Terminex. Tim. Yeah, yeah, Tim. Uh, yeah, Tim yeah, from Terminex. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we don't mean to put your yeah, I know. Out there about Tim, but. Uh, but man, when he comes here, he's just like he can't wait to. He can't wait. He said, he, 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 he says, "David home." I'm like, I'm like, how about me? He's like, hey, I mean, this is, I mean, it's not just me. He wants to say, "Hey, how's David doing?" or whatever. Right. I mean, guys, I'm telling you, you, can. And I bet you, if David was listening to this, he would testify mm -hmm. to the stuff. He's been to my house when when it was with my wife and my children. He doesn't even live here, and he can even testify mm -hmm. that there's a difference. There's literally a difference between when I was living with a contentious woman with seven children. Now I'm living with way more people now. We got 16 people. And, and I got me a woman now. And I'm telling you, it's just peaceful. Peace. There's a peace. There's, a peace. there's, 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 there's righteousness because we keep the law of Yah. Mm. And there's joy, gladness. And, 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 and we have the Holy Spirit. We eat together, we, we, we break bread together, we worship together, we live life together. We generally are doing this stuff. And so, guys, I can't make this up. So I'm glad for the laws of Yah because it gives us instructions on how to deal with each other. When I was living in this home with, uh, with my, with my ex-wife, we thought we, I, guys, I really thought I was living by this. I really thought, but we weren't. You know how I found out? Because when things come in, we always yield to her feelings, her emotions. Her mm. opinions. Mm. When 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 the shit really hit the fan, when I real, I'm like, okay, let's go back to the word and find out we really don't follow the word. Like I thought, okay, that was back then. Women wore head covers back then because of this and prostitution, whatever the excuse they come up with, right? But when I really needed to get things, rein things in, and get things back to order, that's how that's how I found out how bad Christianity do not follow this book. And so my house that I was led by me. 
had no rules, no regulation. It was all perceived. I was going by one rule. The other woman, the, the my ex-wife, she had her own laws and, and, and statutes, pretty much lawlessness right. and hate. I was operating with the, 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 the spirit of love. She was operating by the law of hate. And the children is following that, I guess. But, you know, you know whatever the case is. But but what is the house? What is the what is the book says? A house divided what? Cannot stand. Cannot stand. And so we had two visions, two laws at at, at, at going at work. Yep. You had the law of Yah, and you had the law of self. Wow. I mean, I can even show you here where where my ex wife even said. I mean, just to, just give you that. She said, man, I, I, if I want to wear a head cover, if I if I don't want to wear a head cover, I want to wear makeup or whatever. This is how God made me. I'm not changing. If you don't like how God made me, wait a minute. Were we all made? Aren't we supposed to be a new creation, a new creature in Christ? Aren't we supposed to change? Uh -huh. Aren't we supposed to be the renewing of our mind? Yeah. She's talking yeah. about don't change. This is how I am. Either you accept me the way I am, the way God accept her God. Accept her the way she's got. Then, hey, I'm going to be a Christian and I'm not moving. I can't make this up, Brother David. And so I'm just trying to tell you the kingdom can be wherever the kingdom is within us. And wherever we are and wherever we operate, in, that's where the kingdom is. But I'm telling you, having these laws and these statutes and these commandments brings me way more security, give me more peace because now I know. It's like playing football. Can you imagine you had no plays? You just show up <laughs> and you're just like, okay, guys, hey, uh, they call play. I, what's the play? Or we just, let's just draw it up in the. Let's we're just gonna draw it up in the sand. You start drawing up plays in the dirt, right then and there. No studying, no practice, no. Mm. You just you're just winging it. They say, hey, what do you want the play to be? You call it play. Hey, how about you? Hey, you talk to the, you talk to the same. What do you want the play to be? We just flip. Hey, let, let's just do. Let, let's just take a coin and just flip. We're just gonna. Run. Hey, let's just pass. I mean, what kind of crap is this? Yeah. Are you going against a team that's well organized? They have play. They have structure. We have no structure. It's chaos. I mean, think about just what's happening in Venezuela. Oh, my They're goodness. They're literally dealing with the world without rule Ru law. It's and chaos. It's chaotic. It's chaotic. And so, guys, that's how my house... I didn't think so. When I was in it, I thought it was organized because guess what I was comparing it to? I took my chaotic home and compared it to the Christian chaotic home. And mine was better. So I thought, like, oh, that's my better. But guess what? Some, it says, it says, it says one, one seems right until it's been tested. Yeah. So when I took my world and tested and tested against uh, Straightway, yes, I realized, right. like, oh, shit. My thing is chaos. There's no peace. Hey, same thing here, brother. You see what I'm saying? Yes, so there was a difference. So anyway, I, I know I kind of went into that for a long no, time. No, but right, brother, but I want to show you the kingdom of God is not meat, drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. In this case, the Holy Spirit. So guys, let me keep on reading. Go to Luke 17. Now, um, and this word, and you guys heard me quoting this already. Luke 17, 20. And you read that one. Luke 17? <clears throat> yeah. Luke 17, verse 21. <clears throat> yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, Luke chapter 17, verse 21. It says, Neither shall they say, Lo here, or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of Yah is within you. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the, one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there, Go not after them and nor follow them. Where do you want to start? Just 21. Did you read 21? Oh, yeah. Okay, I passed read, read 21 one more time again. Neither Sorry. shall they say, Lo here, lo there. For behold, the kingdom of Yah is within so you. So the kingdom of Yah is within you. When you have the Holy Spirit, that's where the kingdom of Yah is within you. And the way, and when you're around other people who are children of Yah, and you're living according to the righteousness, the peace, the joy. That's the truth. But, I mean, I remember my ex-wife said, well, there's no joy, there's no peace. You know why there's no joy, no peace? The very thing that you hate is the one that brings the peace mm -hmm. and the joy Come is on, the right. righteousness of Yah. If you guys think I'm making this thing up, let's read. Go, let, let me go right here. Here's Proverbs 6, chapter 23. It says, this is what it says. It says, for the, commandment, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs. Reproofs is what? Reproofs is like correction, right? Of instructions are the way of life. Come on. That is the, that, that's the way of life. The commandments is like a lamp. The law is a light. And reproof of instructions are the way of life. Let me go to Psalms 19. Go to Psalms um, uh, 19, verse 7 to 9. Yes, sir. We're just going to rapid fire through this stuff. But guys, I just want to 
uh, please go to Teacher Shane stuff. You're going to get something. He said a lot of these things, too. I mean, I'm going in just in a different angle here. Verse again? Verse 19, verse 7 to 9. Verse 7 through 9. Yep. Okay, it says, I will praise thee with uprightness, with uprightness of heart, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. The righteous judgment, go. I will keep thy statutes. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Mm. Wherewithal <coughs> shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to the word, to the to thy word. So how are you get how are you going to be able to be clean? It's the word that makes it when you hear the word and it gives you instruction, it's gonna it's leading you like what is what does it says in Psalms 23 that he will he will lead in the path of righteousness for his name sake yes, sir. for his name sake leads in the path of righteousness i mean it brings us peace you know, it says uh, the, the the lord is my shepherd i should not want he makes me lie down in green pastures right beside the still waters he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for your staff comfort me Guys, he's literally leading us. This. And I can honestly, I went through the valley of shadow of death. I felt like it. Yeah. Maybe not like Jesus, but it felt like that. Because I tell you, man, I went through the valley of the shadow of death. And it was his, it was him leading me, guiding me. His staff is what come His word, his righteousness comforted me. And so, guys, I'm telling you, this is some deep stuff. Let me go to Psalms 119. And you can type this in here so people can follow through next time. 119 verse 97 says this. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day long, meaning I meditate, I think about it. When you live in community, you can't help but to meditate on the law because how we deal with each other is based off of the law. Right. When I was talking to somebody at Walmart, I said, how do you know what to do? Or I was talking to Sister Bree. I said, how do you know? Well, you just know, you know, you're, you're working, you know, how you deal with the clients, how you deal with stuff. I mean, you meditate on the law, even though you're not sitting there reading it, but you know what the rules, you know what you can and cannot do. You're, oh, you can't do that. Well, how'd you know that? How'd you react so fast? Because they know the rules. I can't do that because that goes against uh, uh, store policy or company's policy or things like that. So when you live in this thing out, you do meditate on this word day and night, right? Yes, sir. It says, through, it says and, and though through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. Are we not wiser than our enemies? For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers and my testimony. Whew. Testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than my ancient, meaning people that's older, because I keep thy precepts. That is how we do it, is by keeping thy precepts. Let me keep reading. Um, it says, um, I refrain my feet from every evil way that I might keep my thy word. So, so keeping his word keeps you from evil, right? I have not departed from thy judgment, for, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto thy, my taste, yea, sweeter than honey. This saying, this the law is sweeter than honey. But in Christianity, they make it seem like it's bitter, like lemon or something. Or it's like, what is their problem? To my mouth and through thy precepts. What he says, through my, through the, through thy precepts, I get understanding, and therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet mm. and a light unto my path are you guys are you following that yes sir if you go to go to proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 this is the, this is what we need to do more the problem is especially when you coming from christianity you come in here because they 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 they, 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 they they're a religion without law right. without rule and so yeah. you come into this truth and you want to you want you love the freedom of no laws no it's not even real true freedom but you're still bringing that in here. And, and, and then what does the Bible tell us to do? It says, lean not. You read. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Tr guys, it, guys, at the end of the day, you can say, I don't trust my brother. I don't trust people to, in community because I don't know what they're going to do. I don't want to give all my money and put lay at the feet. And so I go, how do I know? But guys, it really has nothing to do with you. You don't trust yourself. That's what it is. You, yeah. you are untrustworthy. And you don't truly, when it, but when it comes down to it, you don't trust Yah. You don't mm -hmm. trust his order. You don't trust how he has things set up. You are against his policy manual. That's what you're really against. But read, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. How many people try to come into this with their own understanding instead of 
his understanding. When you keep his laws and his statutes and his commandments, you can't help but to now have true understanding. It's in the doing that you have more understanding of what Yah is by. That's why he says, you don't know me. Get away from me, you workers of iniquity. You workers of lawlessness. He says, why do you call me master, master, Lord, Lord, and don't even do what I say? I never knew you. You really don't know somebody until you start keeping their, 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 their commandments. Even at, if you walk out anywhere you work at, you really start understanding the company when you start doing what they what they uh, what they require you to do. Am I right or wrong? Does that make right. sense? No, you right. I mean, on if it works in the natural, how much is it gonna work in the spiritual? Exactly. Right? My woman, she understands me now. She has a better understanding than what my ex-wife had because she keeps my commandments. She's she's seeking first my kingdom, my house, my my rules, right? So she yes, can have sir. a better understanding, so she can be a better help me to me. Not to Brother David, not but to me. You know, obviously we have community, so it's a little bit different, but that's 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 what it's like for us as a bride to Christ. Yep. We have a better understanding of our master when we start keeping his instruction. But in Christianity, they say take it and just toss it. Now I know I'm not talking to everybody, but but that's the same mentality you're bringing in Christianity I mean, to the, to this uh, to this walk. Keep reading. I think that was it. that was it for you, verse five. Do you want me to keep reading? Yeah, keep reading to, to verse seven. Okay. And in all thy ways acknowledge him. In all thy ways acknowledge him. Yep. And he shall direct thy paths. Mm -hmm. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yah and depart from evil. Mm. So guys, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. When I live life in community, I can't help but to acknowledge Yah because everything revolves around him. We live according to his laws, his statutes, his commandments. I'm bringing it back to that, guys. This is community. This is how you run a successful community. Pastor Dow came up here two weeks, two, two Shabbats ago, and he says that even though we are a young community, he says it seems like we've been doing this for 15 years. And the only reason why is that we have a great example in Pastor Dow, but we have the word. We use the word. We live by this book, and we treat each other according to this word. And everybody submitted to one another. We submitted to the order of things and how they do it at Straightway Tennessee. And then we, obviously uh, the people here are submitted to me. And then I'm also showing them love by making sure that they are taken care of and their needs are met. So this is this is how we're going. So it, it, um, did you read the whole thing right there? That's it? Yep, okay. Sure. If you go to 2 Timothy, let me go to 2 Timothy, guys. I'm almost wrap this up here. But 2 Timothy chapter 3. Everybody knows this one. Chapter 3, verse... Um, 16, it says this right here. It says this, all scripture is given, right? All scripture is given. All scripture is given by inspiration of, of God and is profitable for doctrine, for uh, reproof. Guys, look at that's part of it. Being corrected is part of this, this being part of this kingdom. Reproof um, is for correction and for instructions in what? In righteousness. righteousness. Guys, what do he say? Seek first his what? His kingdom and, right, the kingdom of God and righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, that the man of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Hallelujah. So, and then last one, I want to read this one and then I'm, I'm, I'm going to open, I'm, we, we, we'll be closing it here. But Ephesians chapter 6. And people worry about, um, once again, I really believe it comes down to trust. It really comes down to trust. I'm going to read that. Can you uh, read that 6.5? I'm going to let you read it. Ephesians 6.5. Or do you, you want me to do it? Or I you can want... do it. Yep. Ephesians 6.5. Six, 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 five. 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 And this is the relationship between master and servant. Guys, either you're a master, you're a servant, or a servant. We all are servants, okay? From Pastor Dow all the way down to all of the straightway ministry, we are all servants. Now, within all of the servant to the, the people who are servants, there are people who are in the position of master or ruler or captains or chief. So we all are servants. Mm -hmm. The chief, the, the greatest among you is the one who serves. And Pastor Dow is on the top of the food chain. And so he's the chief servant of them all because right. he's got to make sure. I mean, I only, I only have to worry about one community. Pastor Dow has to not only worry about the nine communities, he has to worry about all the people that call the, the blog talk radio, all the people that's, about, I mean, Pastor Dow's traveling, right? I think he has to go to Georgia, go right. build a house there. Pastor Dow is over the whole thing. I only got one community. 
I got 16 10 people to worry about. Pastor got to worry about the community he has. He got to worry about all the eight other communities. <laughs> he has to worry. I mean, so guys, the greatest among you is going to be the person who's, who's serving as master, chief, captain. They have a huge responsibility. Yes, I mean, just talking to Sister Bree, she just is a little time of leading the sisters, it was totally different. It went from, oh, okay, I got to do this because somebody's telling me to do this. So she's just doing what somebody's telling her to do. But now she's leading it. Everything falls on her. So now she's responsible. Now she got to get up early. She got to stay up late, making sure everything, I mean, it's totally different. Wasn't it different, sis? So she, it's totally different. When you're in leadership, now it's like, and she didn't even want it. It wasn't like, yeah, I get to lead now. I'm going to start changing the rules. She was like, I don't want it. I'm like, hey. Babe, you're going to have to do this stuff. You got to learn it. Yeah, welcome to the club. I get it. I mean, so it wasn't like she was jumping up for joy like, man, I get to call the shots. It was like, I don't want it. I said, hey, hey, me and Brother David, we can tell you that story all day long. You know, so it'll be comfortable just being the guy to be being told what to do. I've been doing that for so long. It's so comfortable. But when you actually have to lead, it does change the whole dynamic now. You have to lead. You gotta be responsible. There's a layer of fear. You gotta you got you gotta be leading the charge. You gotta be the most righteous. You gotta be uh you know practicing what you preach. You see what I'm saying? So but read. Yes sir. Ephesians six nine. So all you guys that are worried about trusting uh how it should look like this is kind of a picture here but it's not only talking about how servants are to be to the masters but it even gives warning on how the master is supposed to treat those who he rules over. Read. The servants be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. This is how we operate right here, right? Keep going. Not with eye service as man pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of Yah from the heart, with good will doing service as to the master and not to the to men. See, everything we do, we're not doing it to, to each other. Everything we're doing, if you're truly doing this right, you're doing it unto Yah, not unto man. And if you're doing it, if it's right with him, it's going to be okay with those who are his. Now, it may not be right with the heathens. I mean, it, it will not be. It depends. But it, it may not be right with them, but it's surely going to be right to those who are truly his. Keep reading. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive from the master, whether he be bond or free. Mm. And ye masters. Okay, it's talking to masters. I got to listen up. This is for me. I'm listening up. I, I, I have to listen to even the other one. But now, this is not talking to those who's not responsible for anybody. But if you're a husband, you need to listen up. If you're a chief, a community head, if you like doing what pastor, the pastor doubt, oh, this is what he's talking about. Read. And ye masters, do the same things unto them. Ooh, it says do the same. Don't You think like, oh, that's just for the servants. I'm good. I can sit back here and relax. It says do the same thing unto them. And keep reading. Forbearing. Forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master. Don't also, abuse them. Don't be sitting here threatening them and, and abusing those who that you rule over, that you have to, uh, be, that you're responsible for. It says it right here. What is it going to happen? Go. Knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So, Pastor, da everybody wants to know, man, Pastor Dow is a dictator. He's doing all he is a dictator because he dictates and tells us what we need to do. But he's not a micromanager. I'm just telling you from personal experience. But Pastor Dow has a master. Everybody's always worried. Women, your husband has a master, Jesus, right? And if they're part of a ministry, they all have they all have somebody's answer to somebody. But ultimately, Yah is in charge of all of this stuff. And so you don't have to worry when you truly trust Yah. You don't have to worry about being abused. You don't have to worry about somebody not being. You be friendly. You be submitted. You be faithful to your master. And I promise you that Yah, if your master do something wrong, he will take you take care of that person. So yes, that's that's all the scripture I have for you. There's so many ways I could have went into this stuff. I know we we digressed a little bit, but guys, every community should have this as their this this is the policy man. So if you're trying to do community, this is a good place to start. Start with a with the Holy Bible, really living it, and not just being a hearer of the word, but being a doer of the word. And then within that 
um, uh, within that community, there's going to be different sets of rules, even if you're part of a bigger community, just like straightway, straightway, Tennessee, because there's just, you think, like, for example, we don't have a farm. We're working towards that, but we live in a 30,000 square feet home. Totally different needs. If you got the people at straightway, Tennessee, they came in here, they're not just going to come up and they're going to say, okay, they, you know what they're going to learn? They're not, they're not going to ask you about the law and the commandments and the statutes, but they are going to ask, how do you guys do things here? They, Mother Carol, I've seen her do that. She'll say, hey, you guys are leading. This is your territory. You know how things are ran. You know how things are taken care of here. And then when we go to Tennessee, guess what? How do you guys run things there? And so, guys, this is exactly what, what, what it should look like. No matter what community you go to, they're going to do things a little bit different. But the same spirit is there, the spirit of peace, joy, righteousness, in the Holy Spirit, it's, it's no matter what what straightway you go to, you're gonna you're gonna experience off the chain hospitality. I don't care about what resources they have, you're going to experience a hospitality that's just off the chain. I've been to five star hotels, and I'm gonna tell you, I'd rather go to a straightway community or a saint that's part of straightway than going to any five star hotel if I can help it. I'm telling you that right now. I mean, I know you probably you can't relate to uh, what I'm talking about there, but I'm just telling you. So anyway, guys, as we wrap this up, if you guys have any questions, so we're gonna. What, what do you want to do, brother David? Yes, sir. So if you guys have uh, any questions, start putting in the chat uh, right now, uh, and we're gonna take a small break, and we shall return shortly. I like the setup.
muting right now. Okay. All right, guys, we're back. Uh, uh, obviously, you guys can see the chat up there, and, and just be bear with us, guys. Since we're using a new system, it's a lot more elaborate, so there might be a, a, a slight delay, but we'll be looking at the chat um, from your guys' perspective, and also. And if uh, you get, and if you guys get your questions in early, because because we do deal with a delay here. Um, um, before the break, it allows us to kind of go through it and answer those questions. So, um, can I start answering questions? Yeah, so let me, <clears throat> the first question comes from my brother, brother Gideon. Thanks brother Gideon for the question. Um, but brother, uh, brother Gideon says, Hey brother Kabir, I thought I heard you say that your father was not a believer question. Is he still practicing Islam or Muslim? No, he is he's not. Practicing he, he's not, he is Islam. not. Okay. So my dad is, uh. He has not professed it, so I don't know, so I can't, I don't want to say something that's not true. He has not professed it, but he has been keeping the commandments of Yah because he lives here. Hey, I take... On, it's buffer. It's oh. Buffer. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe there might be too many people. Hey, guys, give us a seven if you guys, um, how are we coming in? Is, is people, can people tell us what we could? Give us a, give us a, a five if we're coming in, if you can hear us. Okay, I guess people... These are some good questions. After, I, after the break, you guys were not uh, on. Started buffering right after you. Right after we right switched. After you really? Came back okay. out of the break, yeah. We were beef, you Satan. Still buffering right. But now. I see you right now. I refreshed. Yeah, you see what? But it's not on their end. Yeah. Okay. Is anybody on Wi-Fi? I guess get off Wi-Fi. Except for you, brother, Kabir, because you need to see the chat. You want me to get off? Yeah. Let's just get off for now. I don't know if it has to do with that, but. Hey, look, trust me, when people ask me questions, I can make a speech out of that. Can they hear me? Test in one, two, three. Put it on the waiting again until we get there. Mm.
Okay, it doesn't matter, right? All right, guys. Well, we're back. <clears throat> Sorry for that hiccup. Oh, I'm not sure it's what it's still, it still keeps the uh, chat. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, good. Um, but uh, let's see. We're back. Okay, sorry. I don't know what you're right. listening. But, um, All right, guys. Sorry about that. There was a small hiccup, everyone. Uh, but we are back. Uh, hopefully, we can still see your questions. And uh, we'll still... Can you please... Let's do a quick sound check. Uh, if you guys can see us, give us a 10. If you guys can hear us, give us a 10. If not, uh, give us a zero, I guess. Please give us a... Let us know what's going on. There. Can hear something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, ten. Okay, we got tens. We got tens. Okay, it looks like we're back and rolling now. Sorry about that. I guess I don't know really what to what to uh, explain it. I don't know, but but brother Kabir, okay, we're back. All Let's right. Start these so let me, let me just get, so we got one from brother Gideon, my brother here. So um, brother Gideon asked a question. He said. Um, he says, hey, 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 brother Kabir, I thought I heard you say that your father was a believer, uh, uh, was not a believer. Question, is he still practicing, he said, Muslim, Islam? Uh, no, my dad is, um, he, he has not, from what I can see, is practicing Islam. Um, he practiced keeping the commandments because he lives here at Straightway Praise Land. So uh, he abides by the law and the commandments and the rules. Uh, that we have here straightway and straight. So he's, he's, he's been submitted to that. Um, but he has not made a profession to Jesus Christ that I know of. Um, but he respects the customs, the law, the commandment, the statues that we have here. So he, um, he doesn't, um, yeah, he honors that. So I just want to answer that question, but he has not said anything to me or made anything public uh, profession to, um, Jesus Christ. Uh, he has a lot of respect and love for pastor Dow. Uh, for the for the saints here, uh, they on, we honor him as the uh, elder here, and uh, so that's kind of how we handle that. So I hope I answered that question, sure. Brother Weaver. Brother Weaver asked a question: Could you elaborate on why you felt you had to use Mohammed name, Mohammed the first time at Straightway? What spirit were you under with that idea? Is it something you got from Christianity? Uh, uh, no, brother, brother, Re- brother Reaver, um, just so you know, my first name is Muhammad Kabir. It's Muhammad Dash Kabir. And so I just went with my first part of my first name. My public name that most people know me as is Kabir Bajabia Miller or KGB. Um, but if I want to be anonymous, I would sometimes use Muhammad, uh, where I'm still telling the truth. But uh, um, that's that's all that is. So I, I just was trying to go with another name right. that uh, because I was because concer- I remember when I called the show um, I, right before my right before Pastor Dow took my call. I heard that there was somebody from Wisconsin, which I knew now. I know him now. His name is Brother Jim. And I just, you know, Wisconsin is a big Packer. Uh, it's, it's the state <laughs> so of everybody knows pa- the, uh, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, impacts the whole state of Wisconsin. So it's not like if you were like in the city of Kansas City, it just affects that little city. But we actually uh, uh, are, the state owns the Green Bay Packers. And so um, I just didn't want to say my name. So if you're in Wisconsin, you say KGB, Kabir, people will know who you're talking about. And so I didn't want to blow my cover while I was still trying to understand and do my investigation of straightway. So that's why I went with the name Muhammad, which is my name. So there's, I was under no spirit but the Holy Spirit, you know. So I was trying to be soft as a dove and wise as a serpent, okay? But great, great question. And I think there was one more. Do you guys see any one more question there? I'm trying to see. Um, I think that's it. Um, you see any other questions there? <clears throat> I don't see. There's it. Uh, one coming. Uh, let's see. It says... Um, Working on getting out of debt. debt. Okay, work. Yeah, yeah, so Stanley says they're working on getting out of debt completely like Pastor Dow's sayings, I believe. What would be the next step after that? Well, um, obviously, I have my. Uh, um, I would think that um, if you get out of debt, 
if you can get to a point to start saving and, um, you know, Pastor Dow has this thing, but I, and obviously as a financial advisor, I always encourage people if they have that, start you now, start investing. That's what I do. Um, invest and, and start making your money work for you. So now that you're out there working, but now you can get your money also working for you. Um, also start, you know, Pastor Dow talks about, and I'm just, I'm quoting Pastor, but, you know, get, you know, getting some gold and silver and things of that nature. So, um, but I come more from the um, investment side of things just from my background. So good questions. And I think, uh, is there any more questions? Somebody says, the urgency to come out of the city. Could we make a move to save ourselves and worry about the debt after? And worry about the debt after. Um, how would you answer that? Um, it says, this is from Sister Di uh, um Diarrhea? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's a bad that's idea. Not, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, I it's, I mean, I mean you, you definitely can... want to just take care of debt before you try to do community. That's the biggest thing. Yep. So before you try to move in with saints, it's a good idea to take care of that debt. Now, if you want to move to the city while you're getting out of debt, that, I mean, yeah. you move out of the city then. And there's, I mean, some, and there's, really some, the and there's some other things, too, that you can do. I need to talk to Pastor Dow that, I, that we have actually experimented with people who have debt and um, how to handle that. Um, depending so on what kind of depending on that, depending on what kind of debt, if you have student loans, that's something that you have to pay. But we we have found some um, some strategies on how to handle that, um, and even um, sometimes just uh, filing for um, um, bankruptcy is another uh, way to kind of if you're having a hard time getting out of debt. So, but we can talk about that uh, offline. Um, but yeah, there, there's there's, way, there, there's strategies that I am um, looking into. And um and making community work. So there's an right. email there if you guys have questions concerning ministry stuff with Brother Kabir or or just anything. So just uh, there's a KGB live show at gmail.com. You can address those yep. questions there too. Yep, yep. If you send this email to the uh, to the KGB live show at gmail dot com, uh, I can address your questions uh, individually. Yep, with stuff like that. Yeah. You see anything else there, brother? That's it. I'm good. Well, guys, I appreciate you guys being patient with the new format, but this is our new format here. Uh, hope you guys like it. Trying to be uh, a lot more, trying to stay, just trying to stay on top of this stuff here. And um, and um, I, I like I like what I'm seeing here. Tell me what you guys think. You know, if you guys uh, um, um, push your press the, uh, the like button, comment, and let us know what you guys think about the new format. But we should get better. But this is the first time that we try this thing out, so we're excited. Yeah, I think, I think it went pretty well. I mean, you guys let us know. What do you guys think about the new format? Comment on the video afterwards. You can even uh, say something on the chat right now. Um, but let us know what you guys think, things that we can improve on. Uh, even share topics, whatever certain topics that you guys are uh, looking to get more information about that we uh, that Brother Kabir could possibly touch on. Uh, let us know. Yeah. Um, I see Brother Giddy here. So, Brother Giddy, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say I love you back. I love you more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. But um, yeah, without uh, I guess uh, getting too too much rambling, but we have um, what's coming up next, brother Kabir? My, my mind is <laughs> yeah. So guys, so oh, yeah, what's coming up next? We got uh, sister to sister. Sister sisters, sisters coming up. Sisters yep. Coming up every week, Thursday. Every uh, Thursday at six p.m. Central mm -hmm. Standard Time. Uh, guys, there's a great website, yep. straightway.com. Yes. If you guys want to know the schedule for everything uh, that has to do with straightway and teachings and stuff like that, make sure you guys go take a visit out there. Um, it's, it's, and every single video that Brother Kabir puts out in the description below, it has all that contact information. How to get in contact with Straightway. Uh, Pastor Dow's uh, contact information. Uh, straightway uh, contact information. So make sure you guys look. On the description below for every single video, even this video, even this live chat, you'll see that information on there. Um, also, Blog Talk Radio with Pastor Dow every single Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you guys want to talk to uh, Pastor Dow, have any questions that you would like to ask him um, directly live, he's, uh, he takes phone calls live every single Friday. Um, he does have a lot of people calling into the show, so do not be offended. Yep. Well, I guess you can be offended. Yep. Uh, but uh, don't try not to be offended if he doesn't get to your call mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot of people calling. Yes, so, sir. Um, every Saturday at 11 a.m., there's a Shabbat service streamed live at onstraightway.com. If you guys have a computer, that's the best way to go. Mm -hmm. Go to straightway.com. 
and uh, look at the live stream there at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. If you don't have a computer, if, uh, it's more efficient for you to use a cell phone or a smart TV or whatever have you. Uh, there is a straightway live channel on YouTube. Make sure you guys go check that out and you guys can uh, stay up to date and watch this live services on Shabbat on there as well. Um, anything else, Brother Kabir? Any closing words? Go Any closing ahead. word? And let me say, and then somebody talked about prepping for food. I think you should, we, yes, we are, we are, we do food prepping here too. This is from Colleen, Colleen uh, Rodimer talking about, are you guys prepping food stores? Yes, we are doing that. We're working on all of those things. Those are stuff that, you should be doing. And two, I just want to add before I close here, um, I, I, I get my own calls from a YouTube, things of that nature. There's people from all over the United States trying to find an assembly or somewhere where they can fellowship and everything like that. I want to encourage you guys to please call the dining hall at 615-688-3025. I think I said that right <laughs> because I, I give it out so much now. Now I memorize the number. Ask for Elder Becker. He will get to you. But guys, I'm telling you, you pursue this stuff. You know, Elder Becker is doing the best he can to get to you. He, he's only one person, and maybe he'll eventually get help. But uh, <clears throat> and he is a working elder too, so he's not. Yeah. I mean, it's not like he just sits by the phone all day. He does. He does he things, things on the land. He got things that he got to do too, and he uses his uh, time to try to um, um, to 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 reach out to you guys. But guys. Um, I don't know. When you guys come to me, I'm going to always redirect you back to the dining hall. This is straightway praise land. And so we want to make sure we do everything in order. And um, so make yourself known to the ministry. Make yourself known to the ministry. If you want to be a part of straightway or want to see a community, just make yourself known. Do what you got to do. To I mean, I had to do it. Me too. I mean, KGB, Packer player, Hall of Fame. I had I kept calling. I kept talking to a lot of sisters, asking for their testimony. And I was trying to find this guy named Elder Becker. I get it. I didn't even, I, and then they said Elder Doug. I thought it was two different persons. It's the same person. So, so guys, just be, 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 um, be relentless to, to get to this stuff. If you, if it's, if it's, if you, no one should be trying to drag you by the hands. If you really want this truth, you really want to be a part of this a part of the kingdom of Yah, you fight, you scratch, you crawl, you be relentless, you be desperate. And I promise you, Yah will honor that and eventually get you a hold of these people. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate your guys' support. I appreciate you guys regarding this new format. Thank you for uh, being patient. Um, but until next week, I appreciate you guys being here with me on the KGB Live show. And uh, remember to be faithful in the little things. Shalom, shalom. It's KGB, live show We gon' set it right, live show We only tell the truth, live show We gon' set it right, live show The truth straight way Straight from the scripture Straight way Do you straight, no chaser The truth straight way Straight from the scripture Straight way Do you straight, no chaser The true straight way For this truth they really hate me I hit them like a safety On my way to the mountaintop Ain't no way they gon' stop me When you live this life you only get one shot Time is running out but you keep looking at the clock But for me and my household We're gonna be doers of the way It's KGB We gon' set it right we only tell the truth. We gon' set it right. The truth straight way. Straight from the scripture. Straight way. Do you straight no chaser? The truth straight way. Straight from the scripture. Straight way. Do you straight no chaser? The truth straight way.